Hey there, friends. Thanks for checking in. If there were five guns you could take to your grave, these are not for sale. They're not for trade. They may be handed down to future generations, but you're not getting rid of them for anything. They say everything's for sale if the price is right, but these mean so much to you that you have no intention of ever getting rid of them. You're taking them to your grave. These are the firearms that you love, the kind that you pull out of the safe just to hold and stare at. I've got five I want to share here. They are all great choices. Could they change? It's possible, but some may be added, but not necessarily traded or sold. Let's get to it. The rifle that I'm choosing is a Malat Vepper AK-308. It's very special to me. I've owned it for seven years. I paid around $1,200, $1,300 for it seven years ago, but a lot has happened to this rifle that makes it very rare, and the price has skyrocketed on these. It has a folding tubular stock. I have a 20-round magazine in there, 20 and a half inch chrome line barrel RPK parts throughout. It's a great rifle, chambered 308, 20 round magazine. The optic I have here is a Nikon Black Force 1000. Why is this so rare? Well, 300 were imported to the US and then there were import issues going on with Russia and the US as well as a fire that took place at the Malat factory. So the intention was for Malat to ship a bunch of these to the U.S., but what happened was it didn't happen because of the fire and the import issues. That meant that the 300 that were in the U.S. was pretty much going to be it, and the price skyrocketed. You can't touch this for under $2,500 now, and I would never get rid of it because it disassembles like an AK. It's super simple. It looks beautiful. It's a great shooter, and it's rare. And the, the price will only skyrocket as time goes on. The Malat Vepper AK-308 is going to my grave. The first handgun I'm going to choose is my Colt Python. This was produced in 1994. Back then, nobody knew that the Pythons would become rare and that they would increase in price the way they have. I have many people that say, I had one of those back in the 80s or 90s and I, I couldn't believe I traded it or sold it because it was more common back then. And then all of a sudden they stopped producing these back in 2003. About five years ago, Colt started producing these again, but they're not like the originals. The originals are or were hand fitted, hand polished, hand assembled by experts who put these together. It's a beautiful six shot 357 Magnum revolver with an incredible single action trigger pull. It is just so nice. Many people consider these the best revolvers ever created. That That's debatable, but I love it. It's got the six inch barrel, all stainless steel, original Colt Python grips. And when Colt started making these again, they said, well, it's going to decrease the price of the original Colt Pythons, but that is not what happened. They actually increased in price because there's something special about an original Colt Python. It's smooth as silk, shoots like a dream. Even the, the double action trigger pull is so nice. The new ones are okay. There are some issues initially, but the older ones prior to 2003 are outstanding and they still hold their value. The shotgun that's going to my grave is the Remington V3 Tactical. This is a bit different and I'm going to explain that, but it also is discontinued and the price has skyrocketed. I remember several years ago, this went for right around $900. People said that's way too much for a Remington. It's, it's crazy. Well, now you'll be lucky to find it for under $1,400 if you could find the V3 Tactical. Why is this special? Well, Remington patented the VersaPort gas system, and, and that is special because it softens the recoil. I don't care if you're shooting light birdshot loads or heavy magnum loads, it really loads. softens Nitro, the recoil, and it's reliable. It feed, fires, loads. and ejects everything. So this 
shotgun is so reliable. So I don't good. ever recall having a failure with it. It has an 18 and a half inch vent rib barrel. It's seven plus one, two and three quarter loads. It has an oversized charger, oversized bolt release, a flared magwell, oversized safety. It's a smooth shooting shotgun. I love this thing. It is so reliable. And I really like the fact that it could take slugs or turkey loads or some of the heavier buckshot and make it feel like a bird shot. And that's literally what you're getting with that burst support gas system. And people who have these will attest that it's so nice to shoot compared to other shotguns out there. The second handgun that I'm taking is the Bull Armory SAS2 TAC 4 and a quarter. It's a 2011 that I find super special. And it's priced right. So this one still is in production. Kind of rare. A lot of people want to get their hands on it. It's not often available, but if you search hard enough, you may find it. They were able to put 18 rounds in what's commonly a... 17 round mag for 2011. It's four and a quarter inch barrel. It has the slide cuts in there. Nice polymer grip. It has an aluminum frame and a black slide. It has a flared magwell and a trigger that is worth writing home about. Just an incredible trigger. I love it. And they all come optic ready. And I have a house on 507C on there. It fits perfectly. It has raised sights. It's just a phenomenal shooting 2011. You, know, you say, well, there are other ones out there. Well, that's true, but this one is mine, and I love what it offers. It's super reliable, great trigger, great all-around function with 18 rounds. What's not to love? And the MSRP on this is 1760 so I'm a little bit away from the real high-dollar firearms that I showed, especially with the Malat, but this thing is awesome with the four and a quarter inch bushingless bull barrel. Love it, and I think if you get a chance to shoot this handgun, you will as well. Another rifle that I'm taking to my grave is based off the VHS-2, and it's a Springfield Armory bullpup. I love this bullpup. It offers a very short firearm with yet a 16-inch barrel. Very common rifle length or carbine length I should say but it's a great firearm I love shooting this if you're not familiar with bull pups it takes the magazine and the ejection moves it rearward takes the grip and the trigger moves it forward and makes it much shorter 28 and a quarter inches overall length which is very short it has ambi controls all throughout and the one thing I really like about this and it is unloaded, is that the trigger, which has a long arm that goes back here, it's usually heavier on a bull pup, but not so much here. It feels very nice. Accurate as can be, very reliable, excellent overall look and shooting impressions. And this thing, you don't miss anything from a full-length rifle compared to this bullpup. The optic I have here is the Night Force NX8 1x8 power. It's got a BCM grip of four-prong flash hider and overall an excellent setup. This thing's going to my grave. MSRP is right around 2k and I love what they did with it. I love the, the size and the close quarter combat that it offers. And it's a bullpup, which makes it a little unique and something I'm definitely holding on to. Those are the five firearms I'm taking to my grave. I feel very confident with each of the choices I made, from the handguns to the shotguns to the rifles. I, I love them. And like I said earlier, it could change. But even if it does, these ones aren't going anywhere. I'm, I'm holding on to them because they are quality firearms. They work great, accurate as can be. And it has some nostalgic value with each and every one. I want to know what your five firearms, and if you don't have five, what firearms are you taking to your grave or at least pass down to future generations? If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.